Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all well. Welcome to today's session. It's a blooming cold day in Perth today. Um, not very Perth-like at all, uh, but uh, welcome anyway. I'm here to warm your hearts <laughs> and minds in terms of your trading knowledge. So uh, yeah, let's look at, uh, let me know that you can hear and see me okay. That'd be fantastic. And I'll just go through this important message. Of course, everything that you see and hear today is Mike's opinion, not that necessarily of Go Markets. Uh, thanks, Wayne. Hi, Jonathan. Cheers, mate. Um, and uh, of course, you must bear in mind this is for educational purposes only and do your own due diligence on anything that you see or hear that comes out of my mouth or appears on your screen. We, of course, will reference risk management and it is a interesting environment where managing risk is important at the moment of course and we'll talk about the whys and wherefores of that as we go through uh, also of course we'll um, tell you what's coming up over the next couple of days there's lots going on uh, including a special session tonight on the intermediate trading clinic side and the inner circle tomorrow so um, i'll give you some info on that um, as we go but let's get into uh, what's happening today because it is an interesting time um now of course on friday we had a, a fairly significant sell-off in the us but we've got a rebound and markets are very um choppy at the moment uh, that volatility is created by markets not quite being able to file where the fed is at in terms of its potential actions in a couple of years time I'm not sure the fed is actually that sure about where it's going to be at in a couple of years time but nevertheless what we had was when the fomc met and released their statement policy statement it was suggested that they may uh, decrease asset purchases going forward and also that uh, it was predicted that they may raise interest rates slightly earlier in 2023 than they originally did this sent markets into a little bit of a spin wasn't much in terms of the equity markets on that day but of course then came friday we had a fairly major sell-off and of course yesterday we had a fairly major buy-in so we've got all sorts of um, market repositioning going on at the moment and again we need need look no further than asia uh, which had a, a fairly major sell-off yesterday and we've got a positive move right across the board on the back of that US lead. Um, US dollar has retraced a little bit uh, on the equity strength last night. We'll have a look at charts of all of this in a moment. And um, we've got um, commodities all over the shop at the minute uh, after being absolutely annihilated last week due to that US dollar strength. We seem to have found support on gold. Uh, oil's just ignored it all and gone to uh, higher levels again. And copper's trying to find a support also. Cryptos are, cryptos are under a little technical pressure again. We'll have a look, quick look at those uh, as well. And it is a quiet day today um, with only the US housing numbers of note later on. Uh, though Fed Chairman Powell does testify before Congress again later this evening, in fact, in the middle of the night uh, for most of us. Um, that does have the potential to move markets depending on how he answers the questions that the members of Congress throw at him. And then we've got a really heavy couple of couple of data days again uh, and one suspects there may be some continuing volatility based on how those numbers come in but we'll put a little meter on those bones now we'll just have a quick look at what's happening in the futures markets as you can see here um, futures are pretty flat uh, slightly to the upside but nothing um, nothing too unusual with those um, uh, they've possibly come off the highs a little bit. We're seeing the European futures looking pretty strong based on the fact that European markets closed whilst US markets continue to go up throughout the session. Um, on the, We suggested that oil was doing well. And you can see there Brent is retackling 75. It was actually a little over 75 on the futures contract that we tend to have a look at. And gold and silver really absolutely got obliterated over the last over the last few days but we are slightly positive on gold today we'll have a look at that but that 1785 looks important 
Uh, Culp is struggling a little bit, trying to find support around these 14s after a fairly major drop off last week again. And if we look at the currency markets, we can see some weakness in the commodity based currencies. And uh, with that slight US dollar increase, the euro is pretty near, uh, pretty near neutral. GB pound performed quite well yesterday. We'll have a look at that, uh, but isn't doing so well today. Uh, and the yen slightly to the downside as well. So uh, a really mixed, not sure of where to place it sort of market going on. As I said, I suspect there's lots of repositioning going on in terms of what's happened over the last few days. And we'll, uh, and what may be coming up as well, because as I said, it's really quite a, a an active uh, few days. If we look at today, really very little coming in at all, apart from some positive consumer survey numbers coming out of, the, out of New Zealand earlier on. The existing home sales data is not one of the biggies, um, but nevertheless will be of interest. And uh, really, all eyes are going to be focused on uh, the Fed chair. A minute later, there he goes, 2 a.m. I think that's Perth time. And um, so about 5 a.m. If you want to get up really early and you don't want to watch the Euro 2021 football instead you can do that but then we really get a ramp up tomorrow we've got pmi data is coming coming across globally okay so we've got australian manufacturing services likewise out of germany likewise out of the eurozone and the uk and the us pmi is really an important number and for those of you less familiar with the purchasing managers index it's often seen as a precursor to gdp numbers uh, and really reflects what what purchasing managers are doing what the uh, in terms of goods and inventories and employment and all sorts of stuff. And we have had exceptional numbers really over the last uh, over the last little while, particularly in the manufacturing sector. The services have lagged a little bit because they were the ones hit hardest by COVID, but also showing signs of, of major improvement. We need to see a continuation of that, though um, hopefully the numbers won't be too hot, otherwise people will start getting upset again. And um, we've also got then um, the UK interest rate decision and um, weekly jobs from the US and GDP on Thursday. Uh, and just keep an eye on this personal consumption expenditure. This is a, a data point which I'm not particularly familiar with, but I hear is now the Fed's, uh, the Fed are looking that, uh, at that as almost our, as if not more important number than than inflation because it does reflect um it does reflect inflationary pressure so that may also have an impact so thursday is a massive day again so just bear all this in mind as you're as you're making your decisions this week now uh, let's have a look at some charts put some meat around those uh fundamental bones to start with the nasdaq uh, which there's friday's sell-off after hitting a record high on thursday there's yesterday's trading slightly higher in Asia today. Really, if we look at a five minute chart from Asian Open, you can see we've been a bit choppy, but really in quite a tight range of around about 15 points from top to bottom. Uh, so we're trading in the middle of that range. So it doesn't look as though we quite know where we are. If those European futures uh, are to be believed and we get not only a buying in that, but a continuation of buying, we may see, as we did yesterday, um, the US futures from an index point of view start to push higher again. Uh, that's exactly what happened yesterday at around about, um, well, whatever 8 a.m. in the UK is in your time. Uh, so I guess that's 5 p.m. In, in the East, 3 p.m. in the West and in, in, uh, in Singapore. So just keep an eye on the indices around that stage for any sort of movement because I suspect the same may happen once again. If we look at the S&P 500, you can see a complete reversal. Um, and, and again, as though we didn't hit record highs towards the back end of the week, we're pretty close. We're within, um, within sort of 30 points of record highs on the S&P 500 as well. In terms of the US dollar, there's an engulfing bearish candle. But really, if we look at what the price action is next it's it's one of buying in in asia we saw that it was slightly higher um after this staggering move we haven't had a move like uh, as 
like this in three days, as long as I can remember. But a quite significant um, move to the upside. On the back of those uh, Fed expectations, yeah, just to fill you in, the, the, um, the expectation is that inflation will continue to rise this year and then drop back uh, during next year to the Fed's target level, which is around between two and two and a half percent. Um, but markets are just going to get uptight every time there's a, an inflation, very, very inflation sensitive environment. That's what's causing the volatility. If we look at precious metals, let's look at gold. Um, so we identified a level of around about this 1760 level, which is we suspected would be support. We got bounce off that and a hard bounce yesterday. You can see that and we've got some follow through in Asia today. Short term traders might want to take advantage between uh, between this level at around about 1794. So around about 18 and 1820 where the 200 uh, or 1815 where the 200 MA sits. But that's really a, a, a high intensity game and not one that um, that potentially um, potentially couldn't go wrong very quickly. So perhaps um, being a little patient with uh, with gold, wait until it's broken 1800 and that 200 MA uh, and then see what shape the world is then. We took a silver chart on here. You can see again silver's demise. That looks as though it's bouncing off the 200 MA, but not a dissimilar picture with this. In that we've got a key level kicking around uh, around about this 2650 level, and so uh, although there is some scope to make some profit there, look how noisy it is in between where we are now and that level previously. So expect lots of choppiness uh, until we get a reason to break 2650 and then we could be sort of moving again to the upside if we get just that US dollar drifting down over the next few days. No sign of that right now, but that is possibly on the cards. We look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin severely under pressure. Let's take this out a bit so you can see context. We've got an obvious key level to keep an eye on at, let's say 30,000. Uh, if we, it is 30,000, about 600 on that, but really 500. Um, books in bitcoin is nothing um but if it breaks that we could see a massive sell-off but at this stage we're holding on to that this was uh support at the back end of 2020 and early 2021 and we've had three attempts three serious attempts at this over the last couple of months so just be aware of that if we look at some of the other uh, we'll just quick have a quick look at ethereum as well um Let's get rid of some of the lines on this, actually. So you can see it a little clearly, not a dissimilar picture. So it's not as if there's some thinking that Ethereum might be a better place to be than Bitcoin, uh, way beyond my scope of uh, of crypto knowledge. But you can see whichever way you slice it, there's a support there at 1925 that looks important. If we break through that, then the 200 MA is the next level to be tested, along with that support around about uh, 20. Uh, sorry, 1650. So um, that's quite a considerable drop to be had, and we're still in excess of 50% from our highs that we hit less than two months ago. So um, really, quite a staggering drop in sentiment towards uh, cryptos. Now, let's look at the currency markets. Now we're going to see a very, very similar picture across all the USD pairs, simply because of the degree to that move. So what we're what we try and do in this situation is look for slight variances, which may give us an indication about which uh, which pairs outside of the USD to focus on. So if we look at the Euro USD there, you can see we've got a, a, a completely engulfing candle yesterday. So even though we're down a little bit in Asian trading today and below that 200 MA. So in terms of this currency pair, we would need to see it not only above the high of yesterday, but really, you know, we're less than 25 pips from a 200 MA. So if we do break that, and so really, it, it, it makes sense to be patient on that unless you're really short term, short time frame trading and looking to pick up the distance between here and here. But that's a sort of five minute chart territory uh, and really hugely intense. So if we look at the Aussie US, you can see there's a slight disparity here. We Again, we're under the 200 MA. But that 200 MA is actually a, a, a key level in that it is so close. It has been tested in the three, it, 
uh, the last three days at, at 75.50. Um, but you can see that candle yesterday wasn't as compelling. It didn't completely engulf the previous day's candle. So a little bit of difference between the commodity-based currencies and the non-commodity-based currencies versus the USD. I should really put a yen chart on just for uh, a US yen chart on just for reference. Um, and there's actually very little move in this over the last couple of days. Uh, so we did test that 110.73 last week. We are looking positive on the USD this morning, as I've already said, uh, against most currencies, including the yen. Um, but really, a very little movement on uh, in yesterday's trading or uh, day before. If we look at the GB pound, you see that completely engulfing state, slightly lower in Asian trading, but you can see there that um, we're off our lows of the session. Uh, again, not convinced of this on a, on a uh, we're way above the 200 MA, um, but we are only maybe 20 to 30 pips from a key level there that we've marked on the chart there, lots of noise around here. So not again, not sure whether this is worth a look. You can see here, there's that line quite a way ahead. So we've got a couple of key points here. This is the noise we'd have to be careful of. And that's only around about 10 pips up from here. So really this doesn't look, even on a five minute chart, this doesn't look great. Um, and if we do break this level here at uh, 139.36, then we're, we have about 40 pips to the upside. So that would be a level that would be of interest on uh, possibly on a 15 minute time frame. You can see it's bounced off that 200 MA. We don't usually look at that, but if it's there, we will. We've not crossed on these yet, but we have a nice line in the sand there that says we break here and we're potentially going long back up to test this level we identified on the daily chart. Look at the Euro and New Zealand dollar. So we've been having a look at, now we're gonna look at um, the commodity versus non-commodity based currencies that aren't US. You can see on the daily chart, we had a test to the upside of 170, 110, um, then a pullback and then we're getting a bounce again. Um, so what does this look like on an hourly chart? Well, again, we're sort of scrapping a little, little, little bit for some pips here. You can see 170, 90, sorry, 79, we're about 30 pips to the upside. So again, that could be one to just keep an eye on. Uh, however, um, we actually think that the GB pound might be a good place to, uh, a good place to be. Uh, there's the hourly chart. This is our chart of the day. It's actually moving right now. Um, I, I'm a bit annoyed because I spotted this earlier and uh, uh, and then went to prepare for this and missed this move. But you can see on the daily chart that 184.90 is a real critical level. We've now broken 185, a nice round number. Look as though there's some momentum coming into this. This is moving right now, as you can see. In terms of where this could take us up to, let's put it on a weekly chart. You can see this, if we break this 192, sorry, 185 level, that's quite a lot of blue sky here or even on the weekly chart. And uh, so this is looking like a very positive move indeed. And is our chart of the day. We probably trade it on a 30 minute or an hourly chart. Um, now the difficulty is of course, is there's nothing there to hang our hat on in terms of a, uh, in terms of a level. So what will, what you do potentially, and it's, it's great that this uh, has popped up because it's given us a, an opportunity to show this. So. Let's say you've got a blue, what I call a blue sky, blue sky trade with very little to, uh, to do here. So what we would do is we'd identify our risk level first. Um, so perhaps, let's say, um, maybe the maybe you even using the 20 EMA. Okay, so uh, if we entered now, we'd probably put our risk level about 45 pips below there and the fact that that's just around a support may mean we'll just push it a little bit lower so maybe about 55 pips to the downside um if we look at the 30 minute chart obviously we're going to be a bit tighter if we're using the 20 ema we're going to be about 38 pips down but still you would sort of say well look sort of be reluctant that's zooming and booming 
Um, and so what we've got essentially is you've got a risk level here. And so, oh, sorry, that should have been put slightly lower. A risk level here of say 25 pips. So what we might do is say, right, if we're here, then one, then 25 pips up from here is Uh, is around about 185.45. Uh, 50 pips up from there is around about 185.69. So we might say, well, look, that's our profit target in the first instance, and we're going to trail with the 20 EMA. So what we're doing is we're identifying risk level. We're going two times risk because it's a blue sky trade as our profit target, but we're still obviously going to trail using this this is looking very strong the five minute chart boom okay so that's our obviously yeah it's great when it happens that's our chart of the day on the fx side of things but religiously trail in these market conditions not sure why the aussie dollar is a little weak at the moment but we looked at the gb pound early and we thought it looked good I'm just checking through comments. Is your 200 an EMA or an SMA on this one? Uh, it's usually an EM. It's usually an EMA. If I've got an SMA, it's a it's a it's a um a mistake. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, EMA is what I use essentially. Um, and I, I, as I said before, unless the market starts trading at 200 MA on a shorter time frame, I wouldn't look at anything apart from 200 MA on a daily chart. OK, so that's cool. Now, let's have a quick look at the uh, the stock markets. That's exciting. I like, I like it when something's happening when we're talking. So um, let's just uh, quickly check in on the ASX and see what's moving and grooving. Oh, something stuck around this 100 point mark. So what's important here? Right, a couple of things to say. First of all, um, we've got some gap to make up. We're down significantly yesterday. If we just pop it on a... Um, there's the chart there. And you can see we're trading towards the highs of the session. Um, and that is reflected in a massive um a massive advances versus decliners sort of picture only 24 of the top 200 declining um so almost an eight to one or seven to one i guess uh winners versus losers which is almost a complete reversal of yesterday so that's where we're at on that now the difficulty is, is to pick things that are doing okay in either circumstance. And we, uh, so almost everything's up. So wherever we look now, there's a sea of green. Now, yesterday, it was a sea of red. Financials got particularly hammered. Um, but obviously recovering today. Um, so we see, uh, if we just look at ANZ. Oh, ANZ is up nearly 2%. CBA, which were particularly unpleasant yesterday, they were down over 4% yesterday, they're up 2.5%. So a lot of money coming back into finances after yesterday's sell-off. Likewise with resources, because materials have been smashed, uh, commodities have been smashed over the last few days, we're seeing some money coming back into BHP, into Oz Minerals, into, um, we'll just quickly zip down to Oz Minerals. Oh, I'm actually not particularly good on Oz Minerals, not only 0.2% uh, only up. Um, FMG, uh, yeah, nearly 2% up. We can see flight centers looking miserable. Qantas weren't doing particularly well before, but uh, are only up four cents. Um, so that sector isn't doing particularly well. Now, Treasury Wines is just, uh, that was one of our favorites last week. And then, of course, there was a big headline yesterday across all the financial media about how China were aiming to have uh, wineries. Uh, um, we've got approval for developing wineries that we're going to uh, that we're going to challenge Bordeaux um, that sent uh, treasure wines into a little bit of a, a pullback we'll have a look at that and what it means technically uh, going forward so 
a little bit of a continuation of that, unfortunately. Now, this is interesting. Zip has sold off, whereas Afterpay are moving up now. These are the two outperformers in yesterday's market, held up really well, in fact, um, stonked up. And of course, Afterpay were one of our charts of the week last week. And I know many of you actually sort of jumped on those. So we'll have a look at those and some of our favorites. Um, actually on charts. Okay, let's switch to the charts. So let's look at APT, uh, which is obviously one of our faves. Um, so we've been accumulating on this, we've been getting in and out of this and on its way up, just locking in profit, locking in profit. We're in a couple of positions at the moment. Um, it's a gift that seems to have kept on giving over the last few days, ever since it really broke. Uh, we're back here talking about this 101 level being really important. We're up, uh, so that was what a week and a half ago. We're up sort of 18, 17 uh, percent since then. You can see today's count some very unusual price action on this, uh, as there was across a lot of things. Um, so we saw this open high, big down move, really tough to take that, but it happened across all, of, it happened across so many stocks this morning. We've got this initial drop off and then we've got gradually buy and come back into it. Uh, and so now we're actually in a position where we are uh, another 0.6% up and trading towards the high of the session. So we marked on here last week, I think when we're talking about this, this key level at around about 128. Um, now let's just take this back out again. So we see this as an important level. You can see how that was the high in April. So it, it merits technically being cautious if it does get up as high as here, uh, maybe around that 125 level, um, just to sort of start getting a little cautious on that. And then, of course, accumulating if it breaks 128 uh, would be. But that looks so strong going forward. Now, zip, not zippity do that at all. Um, now, technically, there's no reason to get out of this, of course. Uh, but there was a really strong move over that 200 MA, looked very positive, uh, and eight dollars was the was the level there. Again, we had this interesting price action in in all of this, in all of this sector, move up, move down, and we've really struggled to sort of find our feet a little bit on Zip. Um, we are still shy of yesterday's close, uh, which was around this 816 level from memory. Um, so. But we are off the lows of the session. So technically no reason to get out of this for right now if you're in. But nevertheless, that's an interesting disparity. Uh, looking at some of the other stocks, as I said, I'm not really happy with uh, not really happy with TWE. Uh, this is simply what's happened. It managed to recover back to open yesterday, but we're looking fairly closely around about this 1180 level here. Um, technically, if we sort of break, you can see how this was an important level back here. If we break, excuse me, if we break to the downside from here, then that could be the market saying, well, no, it's not for right now. And we could sell ourselves back towards this uh, sort of 1140 level. So disappointing after looking so strong last week, and uh, particularly as we thought that it might be in a position to challenge here. Now, if we do bounce off here, then that long-term trade could be back on. It was a long-term, a uh, longer-term trade that we like this for. But at this stage, we're precariously, we're looking at this precariously and thinking, ah, is this where we want our money today? Jonathan, PLS, yes, there was another one on the radar. PLS, and again, another favorite of ours over the last few weeks. Uh, we did have a pullback a couple of weeks ago. That was a profit-taking opportunity on that engulfing candle, but we're back here now. We were contemplating this for our chart of the day today, simply because if we close here, this is a record closing high at 144. This has just continued to be the gift that keeps giving and another one like Afterpay. That 20 EMA would have been a great stop to, uh, to have if you were into it in the long term. We did suggest that this and Galaxy were the two Lithium plays that might be good for uh, the medium term as well as for the short term traders. Look at Galaxy, it's it's really underwhelming. Um, you can see there, we've actually got a double top formation on this. 
so if you look at the two stocks, it looks as though it might hold on to that 333. Um, but if you look at the two stocks, there's no comparison. PLS are the stronger um, are the stronger company. Um, but we do appear to be quite comfortable here. Uh, so if we do get a, a move higher from here, there could be a short-term opportunity uh, back up towards, uh, and a nice healthy 10%, back up towards to test those highs around $4. So worthwhile keeping an eye on. Galaxy is probably premature. PLS is where the, uh, as you correctly say, Jonathan, big jump today, uh, and where a strong trade uh, looks like. Is AP2 too late to get into? I think I probably answered that, Steve, but... Um, uh, but you would sort of see it really up to test this level next. Now, if you want to put a percentage on this, then there's about six or seven percent. Uh, but um, and then it may pause as it did here. Uh, but then there's a biggie if it does break that 128. So possibly not. Um, all good, Peter. Great to see you here, buddy. Um, so that's ones we've looked at before. We like, really like West Farmers today. Um, look at that as a move. Um, All-time highs again. We talked West Farmers last week on the break of this level here. Uh, so this was the interesting candle. Actually, last Tuesday it was, I'm pretty sure from memory. Uh, and that was the breakout candle there. I managed to hold it. Been a little bouncy since, but nevertheless now at record highs at 53, 50, 58, 53. Um, very little to hang our hat on here so um not a big mover and groover but uh, obviously if we look down here we're around about three and a half percent to support we're now about three and a half percent to the upside so if we break from here um, then it may make sense to sort of um if you're already in this to trail this up to at least to to sort of entry uh, around about this 57 level and uh, if you're not in this already then uh, as i said that looks pretty strong for a continued move higher. It is a drifter, uh, West Farmers. It doesn't bounce up like some of the material stocks in terms of volatility, but nevertheless, encouraging. Let's look at uh, BHP, just to give you a, a, a where resources are at sort of picture. And that's where resources are at. Um, got really, really upset last week. We had a, um, there was a, a nearly an 8% drop uh, within five trading sessions on BHP. Does look as though we've had a nice bounce today, but that bounce doesn't look compelling, convicting in either way. Um, though it is theoretically an important level around about that 4640. But now what it does do is if we do get some buying coming back into commodities, it does give plenty of upside, but possibly too early in resources to get excited about that. Oil, despite its move up, has really not influenced WPLs, etc., very positively. We'll have a look at WPL chart. Just leave it on a line chart. You can see those are the highs from last week. But then we had a double top, pulled it back below the 200 MA. So really, that's a dreadful chart to even start thinking about. Just so look, go go somewhere else with your cash. Possibly is the way to go, unless you're in for this for the um, for the long haul. Um, now, I don't think I've ever. Um, ever recommended this to anybody but our chart of the day today um has got to be telstra uh, telstra has broken 360 and now you can see how how long this has been trading around this sort of five cent level this is what telstra does N usually nice a nice dividend stock um really pretty cheap in terms of where it is let's look at weekly chart just to give you context, there was a, a sign that this could be getting quite nice when it break when it broke that 350 level. But you can see how long it's taken to get up here. So really, the the price target on this, um, based on this move higher, logically would be around about seven percent higher, up to around about 388. Um, so in dollar terms, it's not very much, but in percentage terms, it is. And obviously, uh, that's on the weekly chart. So. But nevertheless, whichever way you slice it, that's a very positive technical move. And, and hence, Telstra is our chart of the day for today, somewhat surprisingly. Um, any others you want me to have a look at on the ASX side that I haven't already? Zero, yeah, we can pop zero in. Let's just get rid of all of the ins and outs of zero. 
Um, so zero with light, uh, really ever since the break of this uh, 133 level here, um, looks strong. This was a chart of the week a couple of weeks ago, uh, and has moved higher. A little bit of a couple of sessions where it's it's struggled a little bit to, to push higher than that 144. But again, bear in mind that this um, that we're pretty close to record highs at 147. From from where we are now to there, it's about four percent. Um, so it wouldn't be surprising to see that this is a short-term resistance around about 143. Um, not a compelling reason to get into this, but if it does start to challenge that, it may go back on the radar again. Uh, yeah, we can do that, Stephen. We'll um, arrange that. Ping me a, a message. Might have to be tomorrow, buddy, or Thursday. I can certainly help you with that. Okay, um, BSL, um, okay, I, I think uh, much, the, the interesting thing about BSL is we've got this bounce, okay, so we, it, it essentially brought us down and, and brought us down to that key level there, around about 2050, you can see it there, how the resistance had a couple of sessions below that to test it in mid-May, but we've got a really nice bounce off this now. Um, it, it, it probably wouldn't be my cup of tea, but th there's no doubt at all that if it sort of bursts $22, then we could be up that sort of 5% or so to take us up to maybe 23. Um, certainly, if you're in this already, there's no technical reason to suggest that this isn't an okay place to be, but um, there's certainly a cap on that to the upside uh, uh, and worth having a worth having bearing sort of in mind uh, just scooting through all the questions and suggestions just type in if you want me to have a look at anything else okay scooting on down um, let's have a, a, a look at a couple of US ones while we're waiting zoom has been our one of our favorites over the last couple of weeks um, bouncy bouncy all over the placey um but ever since it broke that 200 ma it's it, it's looked pretty strong now just take this out a bit and you can see maybe here why it's paused around this level you can see how it was support around here 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 and here so you can see just this 375 looks like a looks like a level at this stage which market's not completely convinced about if we do get a move higher than certainly 400s on the cards maybe even 425 um, but that might be the trade that's been in it. Just see what happens tonight. But I suspect uh, we may get a retest of that level. Interestingly, it was actually down in last night's session when most of the market was up, which uh, was a spectacular achievement. Uh, Twitter, yes, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Uh, Twitter stuck. How stuck is Twitter? Twitter has been stuck at this $61 level. You can see there, uh, prior to last night, uh, we could sort of see how this was support here. We talked last week about this breaking the gap. Now, finally, after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sessions where it tested 61, we actually closed above it last night. A very, very strong candle and, and certainly looks on the cards uh, to close that 5% gap there. And then after that, uh, I don't know, maybe up to 68 uh, would technically make sense. So that's a particularly strong chart um, to have a to keep an eye on. PayPal again been one of our favourites. This was our US chart of the week, I think, last week. If it broke this level, and it did, and has continued to do so. Now, really interesting candle last night. So it looked as though there was going to be some significant profit taking this, but made its way right back up to. Uh, to close towards the high of the session. So now looks as though it could be ready to tackle 300 and hence PayPal from a technical point of view and on the basis of this rejection candle to the downside, um, if we get any move in that, that's our chart of the day and for a test of 300. Now we're balancing between this and Microsoft. We, Microsoft is just such a good company. Um, 
look at a weekly chart, obviously all all time highs on this. This closed last night. And so we're going to make it a dual chart of the day in the US. Uh, so there's the weekly chart. You can see that resistance at uh, 260 there. There is the closing high that closed not only above that, but also the couple of candles there. So again, if we get push higher than 263, this looks very strong technically and just such a good company from a growth point of view. So sort of balances that uh, growth versus value sort of concept quite well, just keeps on doing uh, doing good. And uh, looks like it might, um, it might continue to move higher. On the markets for today. So just um, before we refresh our um, our um, uh, or, or, or review our charts of the day. Just a couple of things going on. Don't miss the intermediate trading. We've got measuring trading performances, two parts series, one on Tuesday, one on Thursday. If you're not part of this, get part of this. This is a good one to be. You'll get sent a recording as well if you can't make it along. Uh, but always be best to be live. So I'm going to put that into chat. So that's part of the um, uh, that's part of the intermediate trader series. So that's a really key session. Um, so I've attached that now. Again, if you're not part of in a circle. Um, the circle on we're going to do some psychology stuff on um, Wednesday evening. <coughs> There's two biases which get in the way of trader results. Uh, called preventative and um, promotional biases and we're going to talk about those uh, what they are how they impact and what you can do about them if you've got them and most people uh, most people actually sort of swing one way or the other so again the, there's that link in chat so get registered for for those sessions if you're not already so I know most of you are already but um, just in case you're not there ones not to miss Okay, quick check in on the futures. You can see there they are actually slightly higher than they were when we started the session. So it looks as though there's some, um, as I said, just watch these on European Open. I just suspect they may drift higher again um, as they did yesterday. Uh, just having a quick look. I think we've done everything. So just to refresh our, oh, Apple. Yeah, for sure, Mike. We'll just have a quick look at Apple. Uh, so trading around this 132 level, really nice pop. Just let it catch up over the last few days. Once it broke uh, 120, and again, I think we talked about this last time, but a price target around about 135 on this technically. So that could be where it stops. If it breaks that, then we could see it move up very nicely towards 150. That's when we'll probably get very interested in this. Um, Uh, yeah, zero we already checked in on. Um, so zero uh, where it is now. Um, seems stuck at where it is around this level here. We'd want to see. We, we think that the upside is possibly limited. In the first instance, to uh, to that 144 level, you can see how it was a resistance here just before it dropped. Um, so that would be interesting. Level one would get into. Uh, so not much upside on that. And then the next level is 147, which is all time high. So um, maybe be patient on zero. I think there's better opportunities going on. All good. Right. OK, uh, ladies and gents, um, that's it for today. I hope that's been useful just to reiterate our charts of today. So we, we plumped for Microsoft in the US or PayPal. Uh, we did uh, our GB pound. Let's just check in on what GB pound Aussie is doing because that was flying. Um, it just seems to have uh, halted a little bit. Uh, so just check in. It continued to go up, but that uh, the start of this candle has not really gone anywhere since. So we'll need a, a push. Hi, Jonathan. You're so welcome. Um, and our and our chart of the day, somewhat surprisingly on the ASX was Telstra. 
um, on a break of that technical key level around about uh, 358. So take care of yourselves, trade safe, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll catch you again very soon. We'll see you tonight at the Intermediate Trader Session. Um, get ready to measure your performance because uh, it's critical to your ongoing development. So we'll look forward to seeing you there. Bye-bye for now. We'll catch you on Thursday. Cheers, Andrew. Thanks, Stephen. All good. Blakey, catch you later, buddy. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye for now.